Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Lesson 9.3, which is all about logarithm functions. And let's start out by finding out well, what is a logarithm. A logarithm is going to consist of three different parts. It's going to consist of the base, the exponent, and the value is how I'll refer to it, or the answer. But all logarithms, this is also important, all logarithms will equal an exponent. So when we go to evaluate a logarithm, our answer is going to be an exponent. And you'll see what I mean by that here in a little bit. But to help us understand the logarithm form, let's start with the exponential form. So we know that when we're looking at something in exponential form, that we have a base, which is also attached to an exponent. And the answer is the value. And so that's how we set it up when it's in exponential form. Now, if it's in logarithm form, the parts from the exponential form are going to fall into place here for our logarithm form. So the base that we had in exponential form is going to be the same base when we put it in logarithm form. Remember, all logarithms equal an exponent. So the exponent from exponential form is going to be what the logarithm equals when we put it in logarithm form. And the value that we had in exponential form is the value that we're going to be taking the logarithm of. So again, the logarithm form would be the log of base b of x equals y. Now, when evaluating a logarithm, you need to ask yourself this question. What exponent would you apply to the base to get the value. And this is always what I put, this is always what, the way I think of it in my head, is any time I'm trying to evaluate a logarithm, I'm asking myself, what exponent would I apply to the base to get the value? Because remember, our answers are the exponents. So we're trying to figure out what the exponent is. So let's say this first one. We're trying to figure out what exponent you'd apply to 4 to get 64. What exponent would we apply to the base 4 to get a value of 64. Well, 4 squared is 16. 4 cubed is 64. So 4 to the third power. So our exponent is 3. So our answer is 3. So don't write your answer as 4 cubed. That would be wrong. Your answer is the exponent. The answer then is just 3. Let's look at the next one. Well, this is kind of weird. Again, even though it might look strange, always ask yourself the same question. What exponent would we apply to the base 3 that would give us our value of 1 over 81? So think about what you know about exponents. We've been talking about exponents in this chapter. What, what kind of exponent would make this from it not being a fraction, so where we just have an integer here, to making it so our answer, our value, is a fraction? Well, hopefully you're thinking that, well, a negative exponent would do that. And if you're thinking that, you're correct. It's going to be a negative exponent. Now, what exponent would we apply? So now it's going to be a negative exponent. So now what kind of negative exponent would we apply to 3 to get the 1 over 81? So the negative exponent makes it into a fraction, so we'd have 1 over 3. But now we've got to figure out how to change a 3 to 81. Well, 3 to the 4th power is 81. So 3 to the negative 4th power would be 1 over 81. So there's your answer. Now, this one looks really weird. Log base 7 of the fourth root of 7. Well, remember what we've learned about in this chapter about roots and their resulting, how we could write it as a rational exponent. Because right now, this is in radical form. Let's see how this would help us if we changed it to rational form. So if I wrote that as a rational exponent, it would be 7 to the 1 fourth power. Now remember, logarithms are, equal to exp are always equal to exponents. So by changing this fourth root of 7 to be as a rational exponent, it'll help me figure out my answer. So again, I'm trying to figure out what exponent I apply to 7 to get 7 to the 1 fourth power. Well, to figure out what I'd apply to this 7 to get the same thing on the right side, it would just be 1 fourth. And it really is that simple. Let's look at letter D, though. This one looks a little weird. We have, again, even though it might look strange, still think of that same process. What exponent would I apply to my base, which is 1 half, to get my value, which is 32? 
So this one is similar to letter B because we're going from this time, we're going from it being a fraction to being it not a fraction. So what kind of exponent would do that? Well, again, if you're thinking like before, if you're thinking that it's a negative exponent, you are correct. Because a negative exponent, remember we take the reciprocal of the base, well, the reciprocal of 1 half would be 2. So now I just got to figure out, well, what exponent would I apply to 2 to get 32? Well, that would be 5, because 2 to the fifth power would be 32. So my answer here is negative 5. Let's look at the next one. This one's also a little weird, because we're trying to figure out what exponent I'd apply to 81 to get 9. Normally, exponents result in going from a smaller number to a larger number, but here we're going from a larger number to a smaller number. I want you to ponder this for a minute. We're going from 81 to 9. What could I do to 81 to get 9? Now, if you're thinking that, well, I know that I could take the square root of 81 and get 9, you're right, so how do we apply that as an exponent? Well, the square root is the same as raising it to the 1 half power. So 81 to the 1 half power would give us 9, meaning the second root of 81 is 9. And the last problem here, the what exponent would I apply to 5 to get 5 to the 3 7 power? Hopefully you can see right away that your answer would just be 3 7 Now we have in using logarithms, we have two special kind of logarithms. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, one such special co uh, logarithm, which is the common logarithm. In the next video, you're going to be learning about natural logarithms, which is another special kind of logarithm. So common logarithms are when we have a base that's 10. And we're, when we write something as a common logarithm, you don't always have to indicate that the base is 10. So in other words, I could write this as log base 10 of 100, or saying log of 100 means the same thing. So in other words, when we see just a log of 100, we don't have a base down here. You need to recognize that that's just a common logarithm, so the base is 10. It's similar to the fact that when we see a square root of a number, you don't see a 2 here to know that it's a square root. You don't have to, two, have, to have the 2 there to understand that we would take the second root of that number to get our answer. So in the similar concept, we don't have to see the base here to figure out that we're looking at the common logarithm, so the base is 10. So let's look at simplifying these. Now we could question ourselves the same way that we did on the front, on the previous page, by saying what exponent would I apply to 10 to get 100? And you can see that your answer would be 2, because 10 squared is 100. But when we're dealing with common logarithms, there is a little trick that we can use, and again, this trick only works with common logarithms. And that trick is to look to see how many places you move the decimal to get to 1.0, to get to the, just directly to the right of 1. When I move the decimal to the left two places, my answer here is going to be 2. And that trick helps when we have to do problems like this. Because now all I have to do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to the right, now, since I'm moving at five places to the right, my answer is going to be negative. So my answer is going to be negative five. Now, the log of one trillion, again, this is a common logarithm. The log of one trillion would be the same as, well, 1,000 would be this. This would be one million. This would be one billion. So this would be one trillion. So using our little trick here, I can count up. I'd move the decimal place over 3, 6, 9, 12 places. So my answer would be a positive 12. So why don't you take a second and look at this last one. What would this last one be? Hopefully you're thinking that you move the decimal place to the right one spot. So my answer would be negative 1. So that's how you evaluate some logarithms. Now let's look at how you solve logarithm equations. Let's look at this first kind. This is actually, this isn't a logarithm equation. This is what we call an exponential equation. How do I know it's an exponential equation? Anytime you have an exponent that is your unknown, that is your variable, you are working with an exponential equation. And so how do we solve an exponential equation? 
Well, that's what's in this box over here to the right. We want to make sure that when we're working with an exponential equation, make sure the base is by itself. If there's anything, like if I had an A or something, some number to the left of that base that's being multiplied times that base with the exponent, I'd want to divide both sides by that value to get the base by itself. But once we have it like that, we want to transfer it into logarithm form. So remember this base will become the base for our logarithm. Logarithms equal exponents, so this exponent would be the, what the logarithm equals. And this value here is the value we take the logarithm of. So looking at this one, again, I can see that it's an exponential equation. And it's in the right form, so I'm just going to change it now to be in logarithm form. So to do that, my base would be 10. My exponent, that's x, is what the logarithm is going to equal. And the value that we had over here, the 7, is what the value of the logarithm that we're going to be taking here. We're going to be taking the logarithm of 7. Now, this is a base 10, so really, it's a common logarithm. So if you didn't want to, you didn't have to put any base there. You could just say the log of 7. And let's see how we would do this on our calculators. What you're going to want to do is find the log button. The log button is above 10 to the x. So if you hit Control, 10 to the x. Now, again, you could put in here, you could put the base is going to be 10. But I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. Since it's a common logarithm, remember, it's not necessary, and your calculator will recognize that. So if I want to just take the log of 7, watch what happens when I hit Enter. Watch what happens to this little box here. It changed to be 10. So the calculator recognized that leaving that base open meant that it's a common logarithm. Now, this question says to round to the nearest thousandths place. So we're going to round to the first three numbers past the decimals. My answer is 0.845. Okay, so let's look at, why don't you guys try this next one on your own. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've got the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So we know that it's in the correct form. 10 to the x power equals 14.5 is in the form b to the x equals y. Change that to logarithm form. So this is a common log of 14.5 equals x, which when you do that on your calculator, you get 1.161 as your answer. Now, what if it's not an exponential equation? What if it's already in logarithm form? Well, if it's a logarithmic equation, so if your variable is, uh, in a logarith is attached to the logarithm in some form, we're going to change it from being a logarithm equation, and we're going to put it in exponential form. Now, the way that you're going to do that is, remember this base, is the same base that we have when we have it in exponential form. Logarithms equals x are, are always equal to exponents. My exponent will be the y that we apply to that base. And the value is the value for our answer here. Now, what I always had a math teacher tell me years ago, that's always stuck with me since high school, is that when we're changing it from logarithm form to exponential form, basically all you have to do is drag the base to the other side. And then what happens is the log falls off leaving us with x equals b to the y power. Now, some people ask, well, what happens to the log when you do that? Well, the log just drops off. And then people say, well, how do you, does the log just disappear like that? What do you do to get the log to disappear? You're changing the form it's in. So that's why it disappears. People don't freak out when they see 88% and change it to a decimal and get 0.88. They don't say, well, what do you do to the percent? How can you just get rid of the percent? Well, you're changing the form it's in. So it's not a percent anymore, it's a decimal. So you don't have the percent as part of your answer. So when we go to change something from logarithm form to exponential form, the log's not going to be there anymore because it's not in that form anymore. So for this one, this is a common logarithm, so your base is 10. So we just drag the base to the other side, and the log falls off. So it's x equals 10 to an exponent of 2.873. Plugged it in your calculator, you get 746.4 to the nearest tenth. That'll be your answer. Now, change this one slightly because I wanted to look at one if it wasn't a common logarithm. So, why don't you guys try this one on your own where you have log base 3 of t equals 3.41 power. 
or equals 3.41. So you're going to want to change that to exponential form. And so why don't you guys do that and then plug it in your calculator to get your answer again, rounding to the nearest tenth. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, you should have gotten 42.4 as your answer because, again, you drag the base over, so it would be 3 to the 3.41 power, and then your answer would be 42.4 when you round to the nearest tenth. One last thing we're going to look at is the graph for this. All logarithm functions in this form, y equals log base b of x, are going to look something like this. Now, it's important to recognize um, that it's always going to have an x-intercept here of at the point 1, 0. So that is true of all logarithm forms in that, or lo all logarithm equations in that form. So if I had the log base 3 of x, it's going to have an exponent, I'm sorry, it's going to have an x-intercept of 1. If I had the log base of uh, 17 of x, it's still going to have an x-intercept of 1. There's some also some other facts that are true of all these logarithm functions. To start out with, the domain is going to be where x is greater than 0. That is true of all of these. Let me scroll down a little bit. The range, a graph goes infinitely up and goes infinitely down, so the range is going to be all real numbers. We've talked about the fact that the graph contains a point 1, 0. We would say that the graph, as the graph is increasing along the x-axis, the y is also increasing, so we say the graph is increasing. The end behavior, or the limit of this function, since it continues to increase without bound, it just gets larger and larger and larger. We would say that there is no limit, so it would be divergent. And the y-axis is a vertical asymptote, so it gets really close to the y-axis without, without actually touching it. So that's it. Those are some facts of the logarithm function when we graph it. And that is what we need to know for logarithms. So good luck now as you work on your assignment.